If we want to have wealth, if we want to be rich, if we want to create financial independence, financial freedom, we have to know our numbers. What's important is that you really understand how much it costs to run your household. Holy cow, I had no idea we're paying that much money on eating out. Holy cow, we had no idea we're paying that much in, on tips on DoorDash. Oh my God, we had no idea we're paying this much in interest between all of our debt. It's really important that we get to know how much money's enough. So much stress, financial stress, is caused by a lack of clarity of not knowing our numbers. That is the source. Hello and welcome back to the Wise Money School. Today we're gonna be really wise with our money because we're gonna learn the seven numbers that you need to know. Again, this YouTube channel is about financial literacy and it's about learning our money, loving our money, growing our money, understanding our money, anything and everything to do with money. And when it comes to money, guess what? Money's reflected in numbers. And so if we wanna have wealth, if we wanna be rich, if we wanna create financial independence, financial freedom, we have to know our numbers. And a majority of our population never knows their numbers. And they certainly know, don't know all seven of these. So my question put in the comment section below, if after I'm done, if you already, if you know all seven of these numbers, or let me know if there's numbers that you don't know, but you're going to figure them out and then let me know what they are. You don't have to report them in the comments, but tell me that you got them figured out. All right, here we go. So the first one is actually a little surprising. I think you may know I have this, I have what's called the Wise Money School and twice a year I have students to come and I teach money. I, again, I teach literacy, how to manage your money, how to create financial independence, financial wealth, how to pay off debt fast, all the things I teach here in, I don't know, hundreds of YouTube videos overall over time to everything condensed into 12 weeks. And with thousands of students I've worked with now, I can't tell you the number who don't know number one. Any guesses what number one might be? Your income. <laughs> so it seems pretty obvious, like who doesn't know their income? But there's two incomes that you need to know. Income number one is gross income. So gross income for those that are on W-2 is pretty easy to report because it's what our salary is. And I'll ask people all the time when I'm doing consulting sessions for the first time, I'll say, hey, how much do you earn? And they might say, if they know the answer, they'll say this, they'll tell me, I earn $100,000 as an example. So great, they know $100,000. And then my next question is, is that before taxes or after taxes? And they'll be like, oh, that's before taxes. What do you make or what do you take home after taxes? And then it's, Silence. So we not only need to know what our gross income is, but you want to know what your net or after tax income is. And you want to know this number because we can only spend after tax money. So those are my W-2 income earners. But when I talk to entrepreneurs, they many times don't even know what their gross income is. And what I mean by gross income for entrepreneurs, it can get a little confusing because for those of you that are entrepreneurs and listening, we bring gross revenue into our business, but then we have all these expenses and we get to pay ourselves what's left over. And what's left over is what we put into our household account. And that money we put into our household account pre-tax is called gross income for our household. So many entrepreneurs, again, I work with entrepreneurs every day and very few entrepreneurs that I talk to actually know what their gross income is that they pay their household. So as obvious as it seems, we should know our income, a lot of people don't. But again, we wanna know not only gross, but we want to know net. So that takes us to number two. The number two number you need to know is taxes. And taxes, so this is twofold also. So it's, the, it's the, actually the dollar amount that you're paying in taxes. And on both sides, for my W-2 owner, my W-2 earners, they, it just, they get, money deposited into their household account after taxes and after all the benefits and stuff and they just deposit the check and they you, you know they can live off of what gets deposited but they really don't know what they're paying in annual taxes and so you really want to know 
how much you're paying in taxes. And this even becomes more important as your income goes up. So you wanna know the number, how much you're paying in income taxes on an annual basis. And number two, you wanna know your effective tax rate. How much, what is your effective tax rate? Because there's these different brackets that you pay different percentages cumulatively as your income goes up. And so there's an effective rate. And is it 15%, 22%, 35%? what is your effective tax rate? And you want to know that. And as you earn more money, many times the best way you can keep more money is by a tax strategy. And for W-2 earners, I really like to talk to W-2 earners about ways to save on taxes, entrepreneurs also. So I have a tax video that I teach all the different, I think I teach five tax strategies that you can probably implement right now just to make more money by saving on taxes. So taxes, you wanna know how much you pay in taxes and what your effective tax rate is. And then from there, it might cause you to be like, wow, that's a lot in taxes. I wonder if we can save by putting in some of these tax strategies that we learned about in Christina's video. Number three is credit score. And I have a video right here on credit scores. And there's so much we need to know about credit scores that most people don't know and that's why I did a whole video on it. But yes, you need to know your credit score because your credit score is like the one number that says so much about you <laughs> and how you're judged, I don't like that word, but how you're judged by banks and lending institutions. And so they use the credit score to be able to determine how credit worthy are you. And even though I'm not a big proponent of debt in general, we need good credit scores to be able to buy a house. We need good credit scores to be able to buy investment property, which is what I love. We need good credit scores to have lower insurance premiums, for example, to be able to buy a car, uh, to get good debt. Now, I talk about the difference between good debt and bad debt, and yeah, we don't want, too much, we don't want any bad debt, but we need good credit scores for good debt, which might be debt for real estate investing, for example. So you want to know your credit score and you want it to be close to 800, like in the high sevens or in the eights, and that needs to be a goal. But what is your credit score today? And ultimately, what do you want it to be? But that video will teach you a lot if you don't really know or understand credit scores. And I even share with you how to get your score if you don't already have it. All right, so number four, this is an important one. What is your savings rate? And this means what is the percent of your gross income that you're putting towards savings? And there's two parts to your savings rate. There's the percent of gross income. So let's say that it's 10%. That means you're putting $10,000. You're saving $10,000 as part of your savings rate. But you save money for two reasons. You save money to invest. So that's, you put it in the market, you buy real estate with it, whatever you do with the savings that you're investing. But then also you have savings for like your rainy day fund and your dreams bucket that I teach. So we have, what is the total percent of your gross income that you're saving on a monthly basis, a, you know, a quarterly basis, and most importantly, an annual basis. So I like to see that total savings, believe it or not, is around 25% of your gross income. Now, it, I think one of my last videos, I talk about that only 40% of Americans have more than $1,000 saved in like a rainy day bucket, for example. And few, only 9% are actually millionaires and so on and so forth. Like the statistics show us that we're not saving anywhere close to 25%. We don't, we're not putting enough away for our future self to be towards that you know, financial independence and those retirement goals. And we're certainly not putting stuff in like rainy day funds, which gives us these statistics that tell us that, that such a huge percent of our population can't cover an emergency expense because we're not saving. What is your savings rate? What is it now? And then what ultimately do you want it to be? but I'm always teaching at a minimum, we're looking at 25% to be able to put 15 to 20 up here and to be able to make sure we have the, the extra cash, liquid cash available for rainy day, big purchases and other things. 
So that's your savings rate. You need to know what percentage are you putting away. And I like to say on an annualized basis because some months might be higher and other months might be lower, especially for my entrepreneurs that have variable income. And then this next one is net worth. So a lot of my clients and students that maybe they know these numbers up here, they usually don't. It's very few people that I talk, talk to that know all seven of these numbers. But even if they have these, when it gets to net worth, they're pretty good at tracking their income, they're pretty good at tracking their expenses, and you know maybe good budgeters or something like that, but they don't know their net worth. They don't have a personal balance sheet. They're not really learning about assets minus liabilities equals their net worth. They're not paying attention to their net worth, and therefore, they're not on track, even though they might be good budgeters, they're not on track to build financial independence and freedom because your financial freedom is a result of your net worth, meaning the total value of all of your assets minus all of your liabilities. So what is your net worth? Do you know your net worth? And that's a really important number that you wanna know because you wanna know where your net worth is today and ultimately, relative to where you want it to be at some time in the future, and then that becomes your growth plan over time. And that's how we build wealth towards financial independence is tracking our net worth. So that is a very important number that if you're not already looking at it, you want to include that and make it part of your, your money habits and practices, something that you're looking at on a regular basis. The next one is your lifestyle cost. Again, these numbers, they're numbers that very few people know and they're so important, but I can't tell you. Again, when I'm asking on all these consultation calls and just being out and about and talking to people about money and I say, how much does it cost within, you know, within a thousand dollars if you can, how much does it cost to run your household on an annualized basis, on a quarterly basis, on a monthly basis? And people will guess that they kind of have maybe an idea, but most people don't. We don't have any idea how much it really costs us to be able to run our household. And it usually goes like this. Well, I earn $100,000. and I'm not really saving and investing that much. And so I guess my expenses or my lifestyle costs are about $100,000. So, or they maybe just add up a few things. What's important is that you really understand how much it costs to run your household, how much your life costs of your family, your household, if you're, you know, if you're an individual, how much does it cost? If you're a couple, how much does it cost? If you're a family, how much does it cost? But you need to know this number and track the number. And then we even go deeper with this, like where's all the money going? And, and those that go through my school, we do this exercise, the find money exercise. And everyone that enters the, the class, they don't really know how much it's costing them to live their, their life month to month. But then when they start looking where all the money going, they're like, holy cow, I had no idea I was paying that money in, much money in subscriptions. Holy cow, I had no idea we're paying that much money on eating out. Holy cow, we had no idea we're paying that much in, on tips on DoorDash. Oh my God, we had no idea we're paying this much in interest between all of our debt. And so this is the things we discover in the money school, but ultimately it's really getting clear on how much does it cost our life, uh, how much is our life costing us? And then where is it costing us more that we don't even realize? So that's our lifestyle cost. And then the final number here is your financial freedom number. So your financial freedom number, your retirement number. I don't really like the word retirement. If you've been with me for a while, you know why. But yeah, your financial freedom number. And your financial freedom number is that, is that at what number can you be financially free and at what age basically, or, or how much, how many years in the future? And an easy way to look at this is to take, it's 20 times your lifestyle expenses. So that's what you're looking at. So if your lifestyle expenses are $100,000, you're gonna need $2 million of net worth, for example. So you can see how now all these numbers go together, that when you know your financial freedom number, and let's say it's $2 million that you want to have in, in 20 years, we can reverse engineer and tell us like, hey, if we know what we're saving today, you can say like, am I saving enough to be able to hit this financial freedom number in 20 years or whatever your number is? So you need to know how much your saving is and to be able to see, is it enough? Am I on track? Am I off track? 
Your financial freedom number is 20 times your lifestyle cost. So you need to know your life cost, lifestyle cost to be able to calculate your financial freedom number. Your financial freedom number is the total net worth that you need at some point in the future. So if it's 2 million, and let's just say you have $200,000 of net worth today, then your gap here that you would do it would be 1.8 million which is the goal that you want to hit over the next 20 years as this example. That's where why you need to know your current net worth and you're going to be tracking that. And then your credit score, obviously we need to grow to know our credit score, but our taxes, we're just always looking at our taxes because we can only spend after tax income. So we want to keep an eye on that. Like I said, one of the first places you can give yourself a raise is by lowering your taxes. And then all of this is all of these numbers based on how much we can save and invest and all the things is based on how much we earn. So these are why all these numbers are important to know and how they all fit together. And even your credit score with debt, when you use good debt, you can use good debt to make more money, like in real estate investing. So again, in the comments, let me know out of these seven, which ones did you know, which ones did you not know, and anything you picked up on that. And then finally, if you want help to really take all these numbers and even drill down even deeper, I have this millionaire formula, how much money is enough workbook. And this will help you determine all of these numbers and how they really fit so you can create your financial freedom trajectory. It's a really nice, I mean, if you just look through this, it's just kind of fill in the blanks and I write all about it with all these different things mean and how to, how to think about it. But even this financial freedom number, the reason why I call this how much money is enough because it's really important that we get to know how much money is enough. How much money do I need to earn on an annualized basis to be able to spend on a lifestyle that's meaningful? How much money do I need to invest over 20 years, let's say for example, to have my financial freedom number? Because when we know that, we're on, that we have an enough number and then we're on track for a number, we can feel satisfied, we can feel happy, we can get out of the rat race, we don't have to keep up with the Joneses. And so much stress, financial stress, is caused by a lack of clarity of not knowing our numbers. That is the source of, I'd say, a majority of all the financial stress that people feel and families feel. So we can eliminate a significant portion of financial stress by just getting clarity on these numbers and start doing a little work to start moving in more in towards the direction that we want to go financially, be financially, and ultimately end up financially. But then when we know these numbers, that goalpost doesn't have to keep moving and changing. That you can just say, hey, if I earn this amount of money and I have this amount in my retirement and it pays this cost of lifestyle, that life is good enough, it's great, I'm happy, it's meaningful, just makes life so much simpler, removes a lot of complexity, and I just call it the, the happy quotient when it comes to money. All right, as always, do that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and please comment, let me know your thoughts. All right, in the description, you can get a link to this notebook digitally, fill it out, and tell me how you did. See you next time.